Good day, good day, everyone. You know, we hear a lot of conversations today about negative leadership, toxic leadership, the crisis of leadership. We're gonna talk a little bit about that today. How do we transform and navigate difficult leadership? So are you ready to learn to lead above the grind? Let's get started. everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to another episode of the Coffee with Rhonda show. We are so excited, so glad to be here with you today for another episode. This is episode 68. And today we will be, we will be talking about the crisis of leadership. We're going to talk a little bit about what that is, what it looks like, and what do we do about it, right? So really excited. Before we get started, I'm going to ask you all to do two things for me. Number one, comment, comment, comment. Say hello. Put your thoughts into the chat. And don't forget to tell us if you're watching out there. Don't forget to tell us what you have in your cup. I also want you to just pause for a moment and share this video. You know that we're going to cover something. We're going to drop a few nuggets and someone else out there is definitely going to want to hear it. So take the opportunity to share this video, share the love with others. So as we, before we introduce our, um, our guest and our co-host, my name is Rhonda Y. Williams and I am your host for the show. And I am a person who really is a leader advocate. I help leaders to really decrease their negative stress so that they can improve their wellness and their effectiveness overall. I'm the founder of Leadership Above the Grind Mentoring and Coaching Academy, and we are just excited about the work that we're doing in the world and everything happening today. So that's a little bit about me. I have my cup today and it says, I lead above the grind. Of course I do. Of course I do. And so in my cup today, I have um, pumpkin mocha coffee. So a special blend just for the show. So that's me and that's what's in my cup. And uh, let's go and introduce our co-host and then we'll introduce our wonderful guest, which we're really looking forward to our conversation today. So good day to you, Ms. Raj Jones. Good day. Good, you hear me? Good morning, good morning, good morning. I am Wise Jones, the CEO and owner of Jacksonville's Best Caregivers, where we help expand the life of your loved one. Why do I do it? I do it to make sure that the caregiver reduces that SOS on their journey, which is being stressed, overwhelmed, and providing safety and security. When you can't do it all, you give us a call. And in my cup, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. In my cup, can you see my cup? In my cup, yes. I Coffee have peppermint honey, <laughs> peppermint honey, and um, I have some kind of sugar. I don't remember what kind. Brown sugar. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much, Roz. Love that red cup. I have to get me one of the red ones. I have the black one. Got to get the red one. So uh, thank you so much. Good evening to you, Murray. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. It's evening on my side, tuning in from Perth, Australia. This is Mireille, the greatness engineer. And I make sure you understand that you have greatness inside of you and step into this greatness. I'm the CEO of Empty Energy Resources and through Empty Energy Resources, I focus on women and coaching them to make sure that they reach you know the level of leadership so that's me and i have i i'm still waiting for my coffee with ronda cup but i have coffee here 
to keep me going today. Thanks. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you so much, Marae. That 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 uh, cup is on the slow boat, but it's coming. I'm sure it's coming. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much. And I'm really excited to introduce our guest that's joining us today. Uh, Nicole and I met and we had a conversation and just thought, oh, we need to continue this conversation. We were so aligned in our discussion. So Nicole, welcome to the Coffee with Rhonda show. Please give us a little introduction of who you are and the work you do in the world, and then tell us what you have in your cup. Awesome. Well, thanks for having me, Rhonda and Roz and Marae. I just am so excited to be here with you. And I don't have any kind of classy, the the uh, the elevator pitches that you just had. So, um, but I am a business coach, a leadership coach, and I advise entrepreneurs and business leaders on how to be better, do better, and make a greater impact in the world. And what I have in my cup, which is, it's got, it's a cup of love, I got, I've got some uh, protein powder and uh, there's some greens powder in there. So it's my shake, my morning smoothie. And uh, there's a little bit of, there's a little bit of uh, bourbon maple syrup just to kind of, you know, juice it up a little bit. So that's what's in there. Oh, yum. You know, for a minute. Okay. So I see Michael out there. Michael has been on the show and Michael is a, a true advocate of the Coffee with Rhonda show. Michael's out there. Good morning. My cup is full of green tea for now. After dinner, it will be something more soothing. So for a moment, Nicole, I thought that you were going to, the reason I brought Michael up is because one of his favorite drinks is cognac. And for a minute, I thought you were going to say there was a dash of something a little bit stronger uh, in that cup, but it's okay. It's okay if that's not there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a little early for that. And uh, yeah, so we, we leave that for later, but actually it's funny because I, I, my stomach, I like the taste of, of certain alcohol and so forth, but uh, my, my stomach doesn't. So, no. <laughs> so we go light on that. <laughs> Bit of a right. lightweight now. Oh, I totally understand. We have a few folks out there saying good morning to us. Regina's out there. Good morning. Regina in Texas, and she has coffee in her cup. Maria, hey, Maria, you joined us early today. So great to see you. Maria is joining us um, from the Netherlands. And Maria says in her cup, she has green tea with lemon and mint. Oh, that sounds delicious. So wonderful. Great to have everyone here. We're going to dive in and get our conversation started. And I want to start with I want to start with a quote today. And let me just see if I can bring it up for us. I love this quote by Colin Powell because anytime I'm talking about leadership, I always find myself going to the space of, first of all, what is leadership even, right? So what, are, what is it that we're talking about? And I love this quote um, by Colin Powell. And for those who are watching later on video, the quote says, leadership is about solving problems. The day leaders stop bringing you their problems is the day you have stopped leading them. They have either lost confidence that you can help them or conclude that you don't care. Either case is a failure on leadership. And so today we're talking about um, toxic leadership, crisis in leadership. Nicole, I want you to get us started. First of all, what do you mean when you say there is a crisis of leadership today? Yes, thank you. Well, first of all, there are a lot of leaders that are retiring. So that's first and foremost. They're retiring and there are a lot of young leaders that are coming up that haven't really gotten the mentorship. They haven't gotten the training. They don't have the years of experience behind them. And so there is a gap in leadership. And, and in fact, actually, it was about 10 years ago, somebody that I know who is an exe in executive search actually had called it back then. And he said, I see that there's going to be this gap in leadership coming uh, mm -hmm. soon. But the crisis part of it is really more not just about a shortage of leaders, but it is the way that we're leading um, a lot of leaders because um, because there's a lot of self-interest, there's a lot of what's in it for me, focusing on themselves and the way that and because there's a lack of integrity that um, people are not trusting, just to your point about that quote, they're not trusting their leaders anymore. And with good reason, because a lot of their leaders are not solid. They're not they're not, you know, staying on uh, and, and, and living by certain principles that work. 
you know, honor, integrity, excellence, not just vision. It's important to have vision, but it's more important also to have, it's the, it's the way that you fulfill that vision that is really important. So what we're seeing right now is, is there's a lot of doubt in leaders and there's a lot of leaders that are actually floundering around because even from a training perspective, they, they just aren't getting the training that they need. Right. to be able to like managers they're not, they're they're literally being thrown in and saying go for it and assuming that these people are going to be able to figure it out on the way and that's just not how it works and especially right. as i said with the culture and the environment the news and uh it's just it's not teaching great leadership well so that brings up so much for us nicole we've got people out there already really engaging in this conversation and um and uh oh uh tamiako is joining us tamiako welcome great to thank you so much for joining us tamiako is new on my team um and so i'm really excited to have her uh, working with us and supporting us so great to have you out there um we have also uh big dan hey big dan great to see you again it's evening in kenya in uh, Nairobi, wonderful. I love that we have such an international group and that I think is going to fuel this discussion as well. Nathaniel was on our show um, not too long ago. Definitely fire, I love that fire. That's emoji. how we met. We yes, met through that is Nathaniel. how you met. Yes. We met through Daniel, thank yeah, you so much. Yeah, and I'm not copying you, Nathaniel, by having my smoothie. I have my smoothie every morning, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So, and then um, Joe Beth says that leaders are disconnected. Absolutely. So here's what I want to ask now. What is the evidence that we have a crisis in leadership, right? So whether it's toxic leadership, negative leadership, this leadership crisis that we have, what's the evidence that supports the fact that we need to do something different? Because I think from a leadership perspective, we're always looking for evidence. Right. So what do the metrics say? What are the numbers? What are we seeing in the workplace? So, um, Roz, I'm going to start with you on this. What are we seeing? What are you seeing? What are we seeing in the world today that's telling us we need to do something different here? Sometimes we don't need data because our employees tell us what's wrong. Mm -hmm. They tell us what's wrong with the leaders. Say for instance, the only time you talk to us is when something is wrong. OK. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't I don't see you until it's time for a review. You know, I don't you know, I don't hear from you. you. You know, you don't come and check on us daily. You stay in your office. We have to make an appointment to see you. These are sometimes the warning signs even before the data comes out that we are disconnected. And then also too, the longevity of a leader. Sometimes if you have a, a lot of leadership change, that's a crisis because now, um, you know, the employees have to adapt to a different style of leadership. But let me stop because I can go on and on. But that's just a few things. No, thank you, Roz. I think those were really important, though, that you hit on because um, those are some of the things that show up. I love when you mention the fact that turnover in leadership matters. Turnover in leadership matters because every time I feel like I got to regroup, I'm trying to get my footing for this one. I think I know the plan. And now a new leader comes in. They want to do it this way. And as an employee, and, and, I feel and, and like, I'm walking on three years. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. I get it. Marae, what about you? What are you seeing in terms of what's the evidence out there? And if you're out there in mm -hmm. the audience, type it in the chat room. What are we seeing in our workplace and our world today that confirms the fact that we have a crisis in leadership today? Personally, I see it uh, as uh, a response to what we are living right now. And uh, in, in my world, we call it the VUCA world, where everything is volatile, uncertain, and, and ambiguous. And so people don't adapt to it. We, I think we don't really know how to lead in those kind of environment. And that's why we see the turnover that uh, Rose is talking about because we, we've not actually integrated any diversity as leaders, you know, understand that leadership, it's every day, it's at any moment, it's not just when there's a crisis, it's not just when uh, something uh, uh, special happens, you have to prepare, you have to anticipate and communicate all the time, be in touch with people that you are leading and not just expect them to follow 
So you mm -hmm. need this feedback that comes from them so that in this very, dis, you know, uh, disturbed and uh, difficult environment, you can still, you know, have a vision for the long term, but also the right message to bring in, you know, people that you are leading. So there's, uh, there's a crisis yet, but I think it's more uh, because of the time that we are living. Uh, there's the digital revolution. There's all kind of things going on. So it's, it's very difficult to know what leadership is actually, you know, what a good leader in, in, in this time that we are living Mm -hmm. No, I totally agree. Such great points. I'm going to come to you in a second on this, Nicole, as we continue to talk about this crisis that we're seeing and how it shows up. But first, I want to go, uh, Mary Beth said, or Joe Beth says, uh, mass exodus. Yes, we've heard so much about the great resignation. There's also some pushback on the great resignation. It's not valid. It's not true. It's not really what people say it is. Here's the bottom line. If it's hurting your organization, then it's a thing, right? So whether we think it's a thing across the world or not, if you are seeing higher turnovers in your organization, then it's real. And it's something that must be addressed and dealt with. So thank you for that. Um, Nathaniel said, um, yes to Roz, the data is in the retention, right? People tell us as leaders, we have 360 degree feedback all day long. The question is, are we listening? There's plenty of evidence and data if we are listening. And Michael said the evidence is that the ship is sinking. Yes. The okay. So um, I don't know if you all are Star Trek fans, but I watch all the Star Trek movies. And uh, in the Star Trek, there's a line in the second version of the new Star Trek series. And the guy, Kai Khan, says, no ship shall go down without her captain. Right. And so as that ship is sinking, we as leaders are going down with it. Right. So it's in our best interest to figure out how to right that ship and get back on uh, track. Leaders are trying to save their blank instead of saving the company. Ooh, Michael, you said a whole mouthful there. Yeah. So as we think about this, I want to continue to move into our um, in, into our discussion. And then Michael also said his second leadership principle is if the leader takes care of the people, the people will take care of the ship. Really important. So we're going to take a quick um, little uh, station break and we're going to listen to Roz's Car Chronicles. Now, if you are out there watching, I know this might seem totally unrelated, but it's actually, it's actually not. There is a leader in every one of us. And there is something in our lives that we're doing outside of our business, right? Our day-to-day -day job that we do, that this message is going to speak to you in a different way. So uh, let's take a moment and listen to Roz in this episode of the uh, Caregiver uh, Car Chronicles. And we will be right back. <laughs> I'm Ross Jones, and you often hear me say caregiving is not perfection, it's about planning. If we don't plan, how does that impact our life? I'm going to give you a few stats to show you how caregiving impacts us as women. The numbers are in, and we don't need a recount. More than 60% of care is given by females in the United States. The average caregiver is a 49 year old woman who works outside of the home and provides more than 20 hours of care to an aging loved one. Although men also provide care, female caregivers may spend as much as 50% more time providing care than their male counterparts. The value of the informal unpaid care adds up to this. It ranges from $148 billion to $188 billion annually. Mm. You know, what I love about that is that just think about all of us where we are in our lives and how caregiving um, impacts us. And if you are a man out there watching, think about those numbers, right? And what they say and how do we um, support women? How do we begin to balance the caregiving workload? Um, Roz, is there anything you wanted to add uh, on to that before we move into our conversation and continuing about the leadership crisis? Uh 
Oh, we might have a delay. All right, so we'll keep moving um, right now. Uh, or Nicole or Murray, anything that you all wanted to comment about those uh, numbers that we just shared? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, um, and especially talking about leadership, that's, uh, that's a heavy, you know, heavy burden for women, you know, to, to, to be able to lead optimally, to have to take care of, you know, people and, and balance all of this. And I think it, it can be also, uh, you know, uh, uh, something that actually detract them from being the best leader that they can be. Uh, because those numbers are just are just staggering. I mean, it's uh, yeah. it's amazing. Yeah, and and having to be in even that sandwich generation where they're taking care of kids and they're taking care of parents. They might be taking care of two sets of parents because they're doing it for their let's say their their in laws as well. Uh, it can be a lot, and I I think it comes back to we're talking about leadership. Leadership is leading ourselves first. And so even when it comes to, you know, the indicators of poor leadership is really looking at how we are leading ourselves, how we are taking care of ourselves. Anxiety is at an all time high. Depression is an all time high. Stress, burnout, all of these things are at an all time high. And so and to, you know, to Roz's uh, data there, you know, it's like these women are, are being required of so much more and not actually even having the time to take care of themselves so that the best version of them can even show up. Mm, I love I love that. And I love what you both added to that, because I do think sometimes as leaders, um, you know, we want to um, sort of pigeonhole that part of our life, right? That work, it goes over here. That's actually not how it works, right? And it's one of the ways that we increase our stress. We've got to do better with blending. And as women, we do carry many of those caregiving responsibilities. So if we're out there, so I've been in a, um, a group and Marae knows this, and, and there's a discussion about leadership and what it, what it is and what, you know, what it sounds like. Should we just say, we're all leaders and not say women leaders, right? That's a whole discussion. I push back on that because we are unique. It's almost like saying, don't bring your whole self to leadership. Just, just pretend that other part doesn't exist. Well, how can I be 100% authentic and effective if I, can, if I need to pretend that I am not in a unique position as a woman leader, right? And so I think that... Um, that's really important for us to recognize and understand um, that that matters. So anyway, I don't want to digress too far because I can go down a rabbit hole on this. We will save that discussion for another day. Uh, but let's keep talking about the crisis in leadership that we were speaking about. So where I want to go now is I want to, I am always searching for the why, right? So if we are in this crisis of leadership, why? What, what's powering that? Because I also think that in our final segment, as we begin to talk about solutions and what we can do to support our leaders, that brings us to another place. So um, let's talk about why we are, are in this place. And uh, Nicole, you started sharing some of this um, with us. Before I come to you really quickly, we have um, Elijah, good morning to you. Thanks so much for tuning in. Elijah, where are you watching from and what's in your cup? Those are the two things you've got to share with us when you join with us. So where are you watching from and what's in your cup? And then um, Nathaniel says, I often say, if you don't care, then you don't lead. What she just presented is that caring is lucrative. Yeah, how about that? That's a different spin on it. I had not thought about that perspective. See, that's why diversity of thought matters, right? Because I totally missed that part of it. So Nathaniel, thank you for bringing that into the conversation. So Nicole, what's driving this crisis in leadership? What's the why behind it? Yeah, I think one of the biggest things is that we don't know, to your point about leaders, are they women leaders or male leaders? A lot of it, um, I find, is that we don't know who we are. Actually, there was a gentleman that I had on my show um, a couple months ago, and he said in his book that 70% of leaders do not know their real identity and purpose. Mm -hmm. And if we don't know who we are, how can we possibly be great leaders? How can we help someone else bring out the best in them, which is a big part of leadership, 
right, is not just leading the way in vision and in strategy and all of that, but it is really helping people to be the best, have the best version of them show up. Put Create an environment. A workplace is really an environment for people to bring their strengths and their value to the table so they can collaborate, bring that together and create something really amazing for the world around it. So, so with leaders, if leaders don't know who they are, how can they possibly help someone else know who they are? So that's a, one uh, issue. So it's identity and purpose. The second thing is, and I alluded to it already, is the uh, um, uh, integrity, is mm -hmm. that oftentimes we, and, and we do it with ourselves, we do it with others. You see leaders all the time. We see in the political space, people say one thing and do another, right? But we do it a lot of times with ourselves that we say we're going to do something and we don't do it. And a lot of times with clients that I work with, they come to me and they're successful, but there's, there's a, there's a, there's a ceiling that they're hitting up against and, or they're, they're finding themselves in a challenge where their confidence has been hit. And so one of the first things I look at is, do you trust yourself? Are you true to yourself? Do you have integrity with yourself? Integrity is knowing who you are, but then it's also operating by a set of values, your core values. And so if we are denying ourselves, if we are going against ourselves, where our confidence is going to be impacted, our effectiveness is going to be impacted. We're going to be looking out for ourselves. We might even be trying to protect ourselves mm -hmm. because when we are not safe and secure in ourselves, then we put this shield on or we need to, sometimes we even project right on others. We have judgments towards others and we're telling this person's not doing and that person's not doing. And a lot of it is actually, it's because maybe I'm frustrated because I'm not doing what I said I was going to do or what I'm committed to. So integrity is a really important piece, which is being true to yourself, honoring your word, honoring your commitments. And I love what one of my friends says, Sebastian, uh, uh, when he said in one of his training trainings, he said, integrity is nothing in the shadows, nothing in the dark, everything in the light. Mm. It's wow. being whole and complete integrity. When you think about mathematics, it's whole and complete. And so what would it take if we were as leaders in our own lives to be above reproach, to be consistent and aligned with ourselves? We're trying to align organizations. <laughs> Half the leaders aren't even aligned with themselves, <laughs> you know, and so it starts there. And then because we lead ourselves first and that determines how effective we can be at leading others. A lot of mm -hmm. times leaders are right now are trying to get their people to do things. And maybe it starts with them. Hmm. A lot there to unpack. I love nothing in the shadows, everything in the light. And so I'm going to ask Marae and Roz to react to a couple of things. Like I jotted a couple notes as you were speaking. Um, mm -hmm. You talked about some of the causes of this are lack of trust, self-protection, integrity, and so Roz and Marae, um, Marae, we'll start with you and then we'll come to you, Roz. React to, to some of that that Nicole shared in terms of why we have this crisis of leadership. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, I, and I totally agree. And it's very profound. I mean, it's all start with us. I mean, if we're not authentic, if we're not, uh, you know, ourselves, how can we lead others? And what we, we've seen so far is that most of the leaders right now, they try to behave like leaders before them or leaders around them. So they all get their leadership reference from outside themselves. And that's the problem. You have to get this reference from inside, understand your gift, understand who you are, understand the greatness that you have so that you can communicate it outside and, and lead others. And the integrity part is, 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 uh, is essential because if you say something and you behave differently, I mean, how can people trust you and people follow you? So um, um, uh, I think one of the, the key um, crisis and the key reason is that we looking at leadership from outside in or instead of in out. And, and that's, uh, that's, that's, that's really what's creating the problem right now. Mm, I love that. So Roz, I'm going to ask you to hold for a minute because Marae, I think your greatness minute 
ties this together for us, right? So one of the uh, segments we introduced uh, this season is along with the Caregiver Car Chronicles is the Greatness Minute. And, and Murray talks about bringing out that inner greatness in you, particularly for leaders. And so I think today's moment really connects the dots with what you're saying. So I'm going to play that for us now, and then we'll be right back. everyone, this is Murray, the Greatness Engineer with you. Welcome to another Greatness Minute. And I'm really happy to have you today. And today we're going to talk about uh, giving ourselves permission to be great. Uh, like, you know, like I mentioned to Lou last, last week, we tend to take, uh, you know, over people opinion and, and make it our reality, but we don't have to do that. Greatness is a decision. You have to decide that you're going to be great. And the way to do it is to look inside, you know, and, and realize that when, when you do that, you already have everything uh, that you need to become great. It's just for you to give yourself the permission to be great. So know yourself, accept yourself, believe in yourself, give of yourself, challenge yourself, improve yourself, beautiful yourself, explore yourself because there's a lot to explore in inside of you. Make yourself memorable and make yourself unforgettable. That's the only way that you're gonna find and, and discover the greatness that you have and step into it and expand it, this greatness for you to become the best version of yourself. So that's really what I wanted to share with you. Uh, before I, I, I leave, I want to tell you, give yourself permission to be great. Don't listen to what's you know said around you. Just give yourself permission and go for it. Act, go for it implement things yes you're gonna you know there, there's gonna be, there's gonna be some shortcomings yes sometimes it's gonna be difficult it's gonna be challenging but just go for it because at the end of the the tunnel there is light for you and there is greatness awaiting for you this greatness that you already have you already have all the ingredients inside of you just you know believe in yourself like i said and go for it thank you and see you next week Okay, so I love that, how it tied together, because I feel like we're sort of stitching this all together, right? And so we're talking about a crisis of leadership. Then we went to why we have a crisis in leadership. Nicole beautifully summed up the fact that we don't even know who we are as leaders, right? And then um, we're really looking, Marae came in with, we're looking to others around us. And then we have the inspired greatness moment. So the greatness minute. So Roz, I'm going to come to you now to share. We've covered so much ground. You can share on whatever you want to share on. <laughs> Roz, can you hear us? Hmm. Uh-oh, she might be having audio problems. Oh, darn. All right, I think she's going now. There's just a delay. I cannot hear you, Roz. We cannot hear you. Oh, <laughs> and Roz got the boo-boo face. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to keep moving, Roz. We're going to pause for just a minute. We'll come back to you if you get your audio um, going. <laughs> that face. What a face. <laughs> you know, I have to say, you ladies have so much fun on your show. And, you know, one of the things when we were talking about leadership, I just want to jump in here and say, yeah. you mentioned about last week, fun. Leadership is fun. And, you know, a lot of times I think it's not fun because of what we're talking about. If I don't know me and I'm insecure and I don't know how I'm showing up and I'm not comfortable in who I am and my greatness, then I'm going to show up and like, what do they think about me? How do I, you know, how do I need to look? There's that imposter syndrome that shows up. But when you then what happens is you have the freedom to have fun. 
You're not trying to be Roz. You're not trying to be Murray. Nobody's trying to be each other. You know, it's just being who they are to Murray to your point about we oftentimes as leaders, we're looking to others to give us direction on how we're supposed to lead. And certainly we can learn from mentors. We can learn from other people's leadership styles, but we need to incorporate it in who we are rather than trying to pretend to be someone else. You know, it's like they're, they're, that person is already out there. We don't need to copycat them. We're here because we've got something unique to bring to the table. And I just want to com comment yeah. on that because you all have so much fun and you're so diverse in your personalities and styles. And that it just demonstrates that freedom that you feel, you feel good that you can be who you are. I love that. Thank you, Nicole, for adding that because that wasn't always the case. I think I'm a better leader today because I am so comfortable with who I am now that I can mm -hmm. have fun. I can laugh at myself all the time. I do <laughs> I do the, the silliest things, right? And then I'll laugh and encourage others to laugh with me. And uh, and so I think that even makes us uh, better leaders when we're able to embrace, embrace that. So thank you for calling that out. Ms. Roz, we see you, you, you're back and you've joined us. Yes, ma'am. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Victory. <laughs> yes. What, what what I want to talk about was that Nicole had talked about transparency. A lot of times as leaders, we have either put them on pedestals or we, we you know, we set ourselves way above our employees so that when we walk in the door, we're supposed to have it all together. Our hair, our suit, our briefcase, our cell phone, our desk is immaculate. You know, we're supposed to put on this persona and we don't know nothing about the person. There's a disconnect. Part of that disconnect has come from the internet. The internet also too, social media has, you know, disconnected the leaders from the, from the uh, employees. And then when COVID came along, there was another huge, dis there was a, another disconnect. So we have got disconnect. How do we get reconnected? Just like anything else, so you might have to rebuild that relationship. And, you know, has anybody thought about just going and talking to somebody instead of texting somebody? Isn't that a wonderful thing? <laughs> no, Roz. What? I, no, you know, that would be because, too easy. That would right. be too easy. <laughs> because, because now you don't have to see my body inflections. You don't have to see my boo-boo face. You know, you don't have to see any of this. To where a lot of times we miss the opportunity to let people see how we feel, what we're going through. And so a lot of leaders have been taught to be very staunch, you know, I, you know, um, come to me when you have a problem because I am the problem solver and I don't have any problems at home, but you go home and you know, their life is raggedy as a mango seed. And so people want to know that <laughs> people want to know that they want to know, but you know, we, you, you, you know, we put, we, we, we fake the funk. I don't fake the funk with mine. Trust me. Mine. No, <laughs> but I just want to put that out there is that, for so long, just like everybody else has said, leaders have put on this facade and they've been taught by other leaders, don't say nothing, but go on at your house, stay at your house. Don't bring your personal business in to the business workplace. And just like the numbers that I talked about earlier, those numbers indicate that something is going on and behaviors will let you know. If a leader can pick up when something is wrong, why can't we pick up when something is wrong with a leader? Mm. Yeah. Wow. Can I jump well, in here just for a second? There, well, I yes, just, Nicole, but one second, because Ross has me visualizing a mango seed and is it really raggedy, right? I'm finding <laughs> myself, I'm trying to imagine a mango seed now and I'm like, is it raggedy? Oh, I don't know, but I'm going to have to now get a mango and eat it just to find out, Miss Ross. Did that seed, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Nicole. I was just going to say, you know, I've, I've had a, a lot of leaders on, on my show, and I'm sure that all of you think about all the leaders that you've had on this show, you know, and how they navigated through COVID is exactly what you were talking about on the, on the solution side is a lot of them said, when people said, what do we do? What are we going to do through this? They went, I don't know. We're going to figure this out because we haven't, the honest leaders don't try to be the, the, uh, answer provider they're the one that creates the space for answers to bubble up and that's where the diversity comes in and all that mm -hmm. so you have the diversity of thought and so they a lot of them they literally said 
I just told people like, we don't, we don't know. Right. We don't have the answers. We haven't been through a pandemic before. We've never done this before, but together we can figure it out. Mm -hmm. And then what happened is, is that their people trusted them because they were honest, right? Because they were authentically, you know, being true to where they were at and even the challenges that they faced with their kids and, and dogs running around and kids running around in the background of their Zooms and so forth. And uh, I think of one gentleman who actually was, um, he was the, he was the CEO, COO of Skyport and we've all traveled and we've been in the airports and in those restaurants. And of course with COVID, it all shut it down. And so they had to go from 1300 employees to 50. And Ooh. so he actually did almost all of those uh, layoffs. He had, he personally talked to each one of those people. And then ultimately, because they now have only 50 employees, had only 50 employees, there was no purpose for him to be there. And then he got let go. So he was actually saying, look, I care about you. I want you to know that I care about you. We're, this is unprecedented. We don't want to do this, but this is just what needs to happen. And he made sure that they were taken care of through the process that they had other, you know, like resources and so forth. And also was honest about how he was feeling because he was about to lose his job when he was done with that. He was going to lose his job as well. And people wow. had so much respect for him for the way that he approached it. Wow. And that's really powerful because that is leading through crisis, right? That is putting other people first, even though you know that you've got your own challenges that you're dealing with. So I want to get back to some of our um, audience comments. Um, Nathaniel says, much, much gratitude to all of our women. Thank you so much. We will take that and more. So <laughs> Michael says, when we ask the question about why, why is this happening? He says, because leadership has become less personal because of the increase in online leadership, replacing face-to-face -face leadership. The challenge and the scary part to me, Michael, in your comment is that I don't think that's going to change, right? I think we're going to go more in the direction of electronic and what are we going to do? So Tamiako says identity, purpose, and integrity are all important and so basically your question is what are your core values leaders and then and then is there the connection is there the alignment with what you say your values are versus what actually shows up and then nathaniel says it starts with you uh, mary uh, uh joe beth has a long comment here i'm not going to read the whole thing but basically what she's saying is that everything has changed right everything is continuing to evolve we as leaders have to step up Right. We have to step into this and lean into it because guess what, folks, it's not going back. So uh, Regina laughed at Ross saying, tell them we don't fake the funk. <laughs> we don't fake the funk. That's a tongue twister. Try to say that five times fast. Funk, fake the funk. Don't do it. It's not good. And then Regina, <laughs> Regina says, I love this show. OK, so uh, as we move on, we're going to come back in a moment. We're going to talk about what what can we do, right? I want to talk about some solutions for just ideas. Now, mind you, on this show, we want to pour into you. We want to give you something to think about. Uh, we're not giving you advice or anything else. We're sharing some of our experiences. And you all out there have plenty as well. So I want to hear from all of you on what you think might help this situation and our leadership crisis today. But first, we're going to do something fun. Okay, so are you guys ready for your top two segment? Every week, we added a new segment where we ask you a question about your top two. And it's just something fun and random, and I just choose these random questions, right? So let's go into our top two. All right, so the question for today for our top two is, what are your top two things that are better when shared? What are the top two? <laughs> Roz is laughing. All right, Roz, I know something crazy came to mind. First, we gonna let you go first on this one. You can see your face. <laughs> well, let me see here. The top two things for me, one, one is sleep. When I get sleep, Everybody is safe. When I don't get sleep, <laughs> nobody is safe, honey. <laughs> Trust and believe. Yes. So that's my top two things. Sleep and everything is better. And if I don't get sleep, well, my alter ego comes out. And y'all don't want me to tell you her name, right, Rhonda? <laughs> <laughs> tell them, 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 tell them
tell her, tell us her name because I can always forget. I know it's Laquisha. No, it's Jaquita Alize Jenkins Johnson. Jenkins Johnson. Johnson. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> Jaquita Alize Jenkins Johnson. Jenkins yes, Johnson. I got it. <laughs> awesome. All right. So, so Marae, tell us your top two. The top two things that are better when shared. Oh, that's. Uh... So the top two things that, that are better for me when shared, um, just like Rose, I'm, I'm going to say that when I start to speak French to my children, they better go away because <laughs> <laughs> what's going to be shared is not going to be something. <laughs> you got to teach me how to speak French. <laughs> So that's that's the first thing, and then the opposite, the uh, the other one is love. Obviously, you know, uh, sharing oh, love, sharing can, love, sharing love with our employees as well, because we're talking about leadership in the in the office. So sharing those moments of love to, to be able to. That's <laughs> I awesome. want to speak French. I want the French part. I like to speak. Okay, French. I'll 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 let you know. I think it's gonna go very well with your character, actually. <laughs> that I can't pronounce actually so. <laughs> that's awesome all right nicole your top two and if you're out there in the audience i hope you're putting your top two things that are better when shared so nicole your top two things well, i was saying about love because i got all these hearts on this on this mm -hmm. mug um i could just listen to you all day marie uh and your your voice that's just awesome i love your accent and i can imagine you speak in french <laughs> Uh, it would actually sound pretty good. It's kind of like I have an English friend who, and even she swears, it sounds classy, you know, <laughs> like that's fabulous. Um, so I was thinking about, initially I was thinking is I, the first thing that came to mind actually was chocolate. And then I went, no, no, it's not, not better shared. <laughs> I like to keep it myself, <laughs> but, but I will say, um, I will say dinner Ooh. is, uh, is better when it's shared. And the second thing is, and I'm going with the love theme is uh, sunsets. Oh. Sunsets are better when they're shared. Oh, I love that. I love the sunsets. And um, yeah. All right. So what are my top two things uh, better when shared? Um, the first one is a warm bed. <laughs> We're not, we don't need any further explanation, <laughs> right? A warm bed. And then my other thing that's better when shared, and I I learned this the hard the hot way. shower. No, just kidding. <laughs> yes, 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 and yes. I like Nicole. She fit right in, honey. Yes, exactly. Mm. Woo. Listen, we can go that. We can go down the path on this one, ladies. I better pull it back really quickly because uh, you know, we, we can we can get ourselves into some trouble. So my second thing that's better when shared that I learned through experience is cruises. So I went on a cruise with some with a group of folks, but I was really kind of solo and I just kept coming across all of these amazing things. And I was like, I wish, oh, there's nobody here. Oh, I, well, oh there, it was just me. Right. So cruises are the the other one that I said I would never again do alone. I will always have someone next to me that I could share that experience and so many of the wonderful things that we encountered on the cruise. So let's see if anyone else out there shared their top two, if you all are brave and bold. Let's see. Um, let's see. Michael says, <laughs> never drink alone. <laughs> How did I know that was coming for you, Michael? <laughs> never drink alone and love others and they will love you. The love thing is kind of a theme. Hey, even the warm bed thing is about is about love. So I'm just saying. Um, so <laughs> Mr. Miller Time says, great show, Rhonda. Thank you so much. I don't know that I know who you are. Don't forget to tell us where you're watching from and what's in your cup so that I can I can make the connection and and remember you um, out there. Um, let's see. Regina says her dancing at home. She loves dancing. And then uh, I'm happy pouring out love to the world. Awesome, Regina. Maria says, travel and good food are both good to share. Um, uh, wonderful. And then Mr. Miller Times said, oh, that's Dwayne Sr. Oh, Lord. He says, my family and our boys. All right, Mr. Miller Time. I don't know why I didn't make that connection, but I see who you are, Dwayne Sr. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's you are hilarious. He, and he's calling for and he's dialing in from Aubrey, Texas. All right. So that is our segment. Let's get back to talking about as we wrap up, we're going to talk about solutions for this. Right. And what can we do um, to help with this crisis in leadership? And um, I want to uh, start, Roz, I want to come to you first. What what do we do to support leaders? And I think that turning over leaders is not always the answer, right? Mm. I I think there has to be another way. And unfortunately, that's what happens. We get frustrated, we get irritated, and then we just go, you have to go as a leader. So Roz, what are some solutions that we can put in place to help these leaders um, get better? As for me, as a leader, I have peers that keep me accountable. Mm -hmm. I have I have peers in my industry and outside of my industry that keep me accountable. And, 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 and the reason why I have that is because I want someone that the, the one outside is the someone who doesn't even have anything connected to it. So when I bring you this situation or I bring you a problem or you see something is wrong, you can give me really a better eye view than someone that's in the healthcare, you know, because their view may be, be, be a little screwed. But. For me, accountability. I only have four people, four accountability partners. That's it. I don't need a big, I don't need a UN meeting or anything like that. I just need a couple of people who who I can call, not text. I need to talk. And sometimes as a leader, um, I always say, and this is just Ross Jones talking, a coach without a coach is a critic. So if I don't have someone that I'm accountable to, all I am is I'm nagging, as somebody told me. Raj, you're just a big nag. Okay, well, then I got to stop being a big nag, and I got to help get someone to help me to stop nagging. Right. And so having a coach, having a mentor, whatever you want to call it, accountability partner, whatever, is one of the solutions. Now, mm -hmm. once the person brings you the situation, you got to change it because you asked for that help. Right. You asked for that help. And don't wait to the last minute asking for help then expect the coast guard to come and save you i'm done rhonda <laughs> thank you ross because the coast guard I and mean, i i like to say there is no white knight coming to save you if you are a leader there's no one coming to save you you have to save yourself right mm -hmm. you have to now you don't have to do it by yourself but you have to take the initiative to really look at and say something needs to be different here I came up with a new definition of insanity, and that is expectation without action. So I say that if you expect something, i.e. you expect your work to get better, you expect your team to perform better, you've got to take action to do that. So, Marae, what about you? What solutions that you do you want to offer um, for helping leaders get better? And then we're going to ask Nicole for, to share her solutions as well. So obviously coaching is, you know, is, is up there. But what I find it is work that is working actually is for the leaders to be open and, and open to be vulnerable and get to know his team. Because sometimes we are put in a, in a leadership position, but we really don't know who we are leading. And that's something I've, I've done so far, working in a male-dominated environment, get, making sure that I understand what's happening behind, you know, uh, the, when they close this door in the office and getting to know them because we, we might say, oh, okay, don't bring, you know, um, your, your problems in the office, but you bring them anyway. And that's what, you know, that's what comes out when you communicate, when you relate with the team or you relate with the, the leader. So I always made sure that I, I have, you know, people in my team in a different environment so that they can feel like, you know, they are, they are safe and they are, you know, open to, uh, you know, a communication and, and, and a, uh, a communication and a discussion, you know, where we can find solution for any problem we have in the team or any problem they have. So I think being open is, is really important. I love that, Marie, because when you're open, then you're sort of, in effect, crowdsourcing solutions, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? You don't, as the leader, they're not paying you to have all the answers. Okay, no. every leader out there, I need you to hear this. They are not paying you to have all of the answers. That's an old style of leadership. It's not nearly as effective today as it was years ago. So the old style of command and control, you bring the problem to me, I fix them, I tell you what to do. 
not today, not happening today. You will run your good people away. So um, Nathaniel said, yes, Roz, he was co-signing what you were sharing. And then Michael said, Michael uh, said, there's a book for your, your audience can read, you know, the name, great show. Thank you, ladies. Michael, if you're still out there, type the name of your book in the, in the comments, please, because there are many who have not, maybe this is their first time watching. Uh, and then Regina says the Coast Guard is not coming. LOL. Yes, we always figure it out. So Nicole, what what other solutions? Roz and Marae both shared some really great ones. What would you add? Yes, yes, and I absolutely agree um, that getting that accountability is really important. Get, seeking to understand, getting connected with your people, like we were talking about earlier, that disconnect, solve the disconnect, you know, uh, with your people. The other thing is is you know, coming back to the disconnect that we have within ourselves. So often leaders come to me and they say, what do I need to be doing more of? And the real question is, what do you need to be doing less of? Maybe you need to take some time out first before you go running into the charge, running into battle is to actually go in first and, and actually take some time, some quiet time, check in with yourself and get connected to who you are, get connected to what, what are my strengths? I think of the three main questions that everybody really has is, who am I? These are fundamental life questions. Who am I? You know, what is my purpose? And what do I have to offer? And it's really getting to know yourself so that you can have that, that enoughness, that sense of I'm enough and, I've, and I'm, I have value. And then I can set that aside, put that to bed and say, now I can focus on others where I'm not constantly being sabotaged by my own insecurity and, and lack of confidence in myself. So I would say quiet time. And then with that, in terms of coaching, is it's funny because, you know, people will hire me as a leadership coach or a business advisor, but it's so often I get people to say, you're like my therapist. So it's the time that you have for yourself. Give yourself the gift of stepping out of the the game and and working on yourself having the opportunity to talk to somebody and to really work through some of the personal stuff that is going on and the business stuff of course as well all of that but a lot of it it comes down to uh, ourselves the inner work that you know it's like the roots determine the fruits it's the inner work that leads to the outer results I love that. The roots determine the fruits. That's really, really good, Nicole. Um, and so, and that permission, right? It goes right back to, again, it ties perfectly with Marae's message, right? Giving yourself permission to really know yourself, understand yourself, be great, do the exploration and do the work. So um, let's see, there's a comment out there. So uh, let's see, Michael says, all right, so that's Regina's comment says, I appreciate this show, Rhonda. The leadership in this world has gotten better because of this show. And I have gotten better because of this show. Thank you so much, Regina, for sharing that. That's really why we're here. Um, Michael's book is called Lead Yourself First um, by Michael Wader. And then Regina says, great show, ladies. I've learned so much about myself today. And then uh, Nathaniel said, Nick Nicole, well said, and a bunch of little fist bumps and fireballs and, and all of that stuff. So let's do our picture as we wrap up. We'll hold up our cups and take our little coffee shot. Got it. Thank you kindly. All right. And so on the other side, we're just going to go around and do final comments. We'll wrap up um, and then uh, we'll get ready. I can't believe the time is gone already. Holy cow. So um, uh, when we come back on the other side, each of us will share our final thoughts on today's discussion. And if you're out there in the audience, you can start typing in your final thoughts uh, for on this discussion as well. So when we have this show each week, our goal is to continuously pour into every person that comes by, that stops by, that experiences the show. We want to pour into you and into your cup. So as we leave, we want to get your final thoughts on what we've put in your cup today and what are some takeaways that you are leaving this conversation with. Roz, uh, let's start with you. I want everybody to know that as a leader, you're not a silo and we all need some help. Thank you, Rhonda. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Roz. Marae? 
Leadership start with you. I mean, that's uh, that's just clear. It start with you, and then when you can lead yourself, and I think uh, Michael book is uh, is here for that. When you can lead yourself, then you can lead others as well. Hmm. Now I'm not going to say so. If leadership starts with you. So if everything around you is a little raggedy, then I don't know what that means for you. I'm just saying. Uh, so <laughs> we always have to be willing and ready to look within, look at in mm -hmm. the mirror first. And so, Nicole, as you share your final thoughts that you want others to take away from this conversation, also share how people can connect with you and learn more about the work that you do in the world. Sure. Um, my uh, final thought would be that in the midst of crisis, there is always opportunity. And so just to re remember that and focus on the opportunity uh, that is in, it's like the obstacles, you know, you may be the obstacle, you, you know, the, the situation around you might be the obstacle. There may be a crisis of leadership in your organization, but there is a wonderful opportunity to not just get back to where you need to be, but actually to move far beyond uh, where you were even before. So I would encourage you to uh, embrace that. And uh, how people can find me is they can go on leadersoftransformation.com. That's my website. And certainly if they're interested and they want to have a free consultation, I give away my time, which is the most valuable thing that I have and my expertise is so I give away my time. And if anyone is interested, there is a link on the coaching page on that website where they can schedule a time in my calendar to discuss their specific situation and how to move beyond that. Thank you so much, Nicole. Thank you so much for being here. Um, it was really a fun discussion. As I always say, I don't ever think we have enough time on this show to really cover it, but we want to just touch on some things and then leave others um, with that. So uh, final comments out there from the audience. Regina says the roots determine the fruit. Love this, Nicole. Um, that will be one that definitely uh, sticks with us. And uh, Joe Beth, in fact, I need to write that down because I always say there are some great quotes that come from our guests on this show and I'm never, I've never captured them all. I will capture this one, Nicole's quote. All right, let's see if I can remember to do that. Um, Joe Beth says, I love um, hearing each of you and your perspective. It comes from the top. If you are at the top, model how you would like others to lead and be humble to adapt and change from your team members' feedback. It is contagious. Absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing that. So I want to thank everyone who has joined us out there. So whether you're here live or you stop by um, later and listen to the replay, we really appreciate you. We're here for you um, each and every week. So um, we will be back for another episode next week. Uh, so for my guests and my co-hosts, stay tuned for just a moment. And uh, for everyone else out there, thank you so much for being here. And we'll see you next week on another episode of the Coffee with Rhonda show. Till next time.